business empire or start to the dream. That is the power of entrepreneurship. Hello beautiful viewers, you're welcome to yet another amazing edition of Managing Africa. I am Nitin Mebune. So many businesses come into light today, but before you know it, they crumble. What is the problem? What is the reason for this? Is it that so many people just want to be called CEOs? Is it that they are not sustainable? What exactly is the problem? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am here to let you know that there is the BB incubator that has come to solve this problem of sustainability. On today's edition of Managing Africa, we will be meeting with Ngala Boris. He is the founder and CEO of BB Incubator. We are going to be diving into his journey and success story to know more about this. So stay with us and go nowhere. The Boris Bison Youth Empowerment Business Incubator is on a mission to support United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, minding startups and youths in Cameroon and beyond, with the express aim of nurturing an environmentally conscious and profitable economy. It has as vision to promote the development of sustainable emerging businesses by empowering the youth of Cameroon who are passionate about entrepreneurship. Its mission is to eliminate poverty by providing quality education to Cameroonian youths aged between 18 and 35 to ensure that they have a sustainable source of livelihood in entrepreneurship. BB Incubator is committed to eliminate unemployment and poverty by empowering the youth to pursue entrepreneurship. The Incubator provides mentorship and coaching programs for young entrepreneurs. It also has high-level office areas and cubicles to rent at affordable prices and plants with varying packages. The BB Incubator provides event space for occasions, exhibitions and more. The Boris Bison Youth Empowerment Business Incubator was founded by Ngala Boris. Welcome back, diehard viewers of Managing Africa. Joining us on the stage today is Ngala Boris. He is a highly experienced and a dynamic speaker. He is also an investor and the CEO of Boris Bison Sal. He is also the founder of BB Incubator, which we are going to be focusing on this edition of Managing Africa. It's a pleasure to have you on board the program. My great pleasure, thank you. So tell us, what is your appraisal of the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Cameroon? Well, taking an assessment, a close assessment of the ecosystem in Cameroon, the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Cameroon, um, as an entrepreneur, I can only say we have hope. There's a lot of hope. Um, I, I look at it from the perspective of being positive. Yeah. Uh, irrespective of the so many things that we see that need to be fixed and of course there are a lot of uh, key uh, players out there that have been doing a lot that have been sacrificing a lot that have been putting out a lot and of course there are still so many things that we are lacking in which um, happens to be the right that the access to the right knowledge and of course you know the access to the right network yeah. and of course the access to also finance of course you know so there are a couple of things that uh, have to put the ecosystem together that have to help entrepreneurs to actually scale to not just scale to first of all start mm -hmm. uh, to start and to grow and to scale and so there is um, the general phenomenon that is moving around. There's a wind that is blowing now, the wind of entrepreneurship. Everyone is just like entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneurs. But who is an entrepreneur? That's the question. Um, who is an entrepreneur? Uh, the people claiming entrepreneurship, are they really entrepreneurs? Do they have a story? Do they have a background? And you see a lot of entrepreneurs that are claiming to be entrepreneurs without backbone. So entrepreneurs without backbone, entrepreneurs without a story of failing, entrepreneurs without the story of being patient and consistent, entrepreneurs without the story of being humble, 
you know. Uh, a lot of people are just like entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs of making it quick, yeah. make it now. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things that we're seeing within the ecosystem. That's what I can say, that there is still hope. There is a lot of green lights because there are still people out there that are doing things. They are consistent in the very first place. They are, their vision is uh, community oriented, is impact oriented. It's not just the money, money, money thing. Making, making it quick right now. That's not, there are people out there that still have genuine vision. They are authentic, they are credible enough. And yeah, I think we have hope. Let's, let's look at um, so many businesses come into play. So many people open small businesses and before you know it, you stop hearing about them after a short period of time. What do you think is the problem? What are they not doing that they should be doing? Thank you for that question. Actually, the first question I would ask by answering your question is, why did the person start the business in the very first place? Because each and everything that personally I have ever realized or anyone, anyone out there start, started and they realized, which is adding value to the community, to the, the, to the ecosystem in one way or the other, started with a why. What was their why? Why did they start the business? Did they start the business with, a, with, a, with, a, with an ulterior motive of making it quick? Because maybe that could be a shortcut yeah. to making it quick. Like they realize that the money is no longer coming. That is it. So many people start businesses with the motive of making money. And when the money is not coming, they are frustrated. That is the main fundamental reason for them shutting down. Mm -hmm. So they didn't start with the main uh, key pillars, which happens to be passion. You know, you must be passionate about something before you stay consistent. After the passion, you have to be decisive enough to take that decision, to take that decision that helps you to stay focused. You know, you decide, but decision is not enough. So the, me, I have like three main pillars that keep me on the road. It's not just uh, being passionate. It's not just being decisive enough. You have to decide, but you have to be disciplined. If you really have to make it, because at the end of the year or the beginning of the year, each and every one does take New Year resolutions. But two weeks, two months into the year, they stop. They just, they just stop. They just forget about it because they are not disciplined. They, they have to be disciplined. And they have to be determined because at some point you're totally exhausted. And discipline alone cannot hold you. You, you have to be at that state of mental toughness, I would say. And that can only be realized when you are determined to say, I don't care what happens, I'm focused, I have to make this happen. Not just for me, but because of my community. Of course, I have people I'm to look after. So I want also to be remembered of this particular thing I'm holding on to. So there's that part of legacy that comes in. Legacy. There's that part of legacy that comes in. And why did they start the business? Yeah. Why did they start the business? That's the main fundamental question that I would ask. Um, also, one of the main reasons is because people uh, don't no longer have that passion to do things that will solve problems. They want to start a business and right away they go into creating investment platforms. I'm not against that. Believe me, I'm not against that, but it's counterproductive when you start a business by taking money from people and using people's money to do that business without doing it with your own sweat, with your own funds, with your own money and failing. Then you learn from there, you'll be able to reshape things, have a structure have a kind of like a structure, have a strategy, have a plan, a clear plan to work on. So many people just jump into, oh, they have an idea and they feel this idea is a, it's a gold mine, it's a jackpot. So they gather money from here, from here, from here. And at the end of the day, when it does not meet up their target, what happens? They are discouraged, mm -hmm. some run out of the country, and it actually discourages a lot of authentic entrepreneurs because it's just like 
others, other people out there just see each and every entrepreneur as a scammer or as a phony. But if you really want to do something and stay consistent at it and succeed at it, you've got to get to that point where you do things by yourself. You don't depend on people's funds to run your business. Do it, fail, pick up yourself, and try again. Thank you very much for that insight and for sharing your thoughts. Now, let's talk about BB Incubator. Tell me your story about Baby Incubator. What motivated you? Because when you look around um, Cameroon today, there are so many businesses, but they lack sustainability. You'll agree with me? And I want to believe that BB Incubator comes to solve that problem and many more. Exactly. What inspired you to come up with that initiative? Well, um, it started when I was still very young. I still remember clearly when my mom used to do petty businesses, you know what. So I started picking up stuff from there. I know how I felt when I didn't have a guidance, when I needed one. I know how I felt when I didn't have someone to encourage me when I needed one. And I don't want another person to feel the same way. Baby Incubator is just an open space and our vision is to uh, you know, support to help hold the hands of entrepreneurs, yeah. young Cameroonian entrepreneurs, through their journey of development yeah. in business, in entrepreneurship. And we're doing that by sharing knowledge, yeah. shared knowledge. Uh, we have a full facility, a computer room where they can, uh, you know, have free access to internet services and they can support their different projects, you know. And they have like co-working spaces after their projects and everything, they are able to use the co-working space for their offices, you know. One thing about Cameroon is, especially Douala, affording an office space is quite very expensive. It's not feasible for a startup. But the co-working space there is to help them through their journey as well. And we've got like the side of corporate, of branding of corporate companies. So even those that come as startups within the company, they don't have to go out there to look for someone to give them that branding. We do their website, we do, uh, their, we, do we, we make everything for them. Like there's a photography studio, there's an infography, there's a videography there. And everything is just like a complete setup. And that is purposely to help support them to help guide them. Because I believe that a lot of people have taken the wrong route because they didn't have guidance. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't have that support. But the, the, the point of BB Incubator is just to um, hold their hands through their, de their development, help them to not just develop successful businesses, but sustainable businesses. That's what we're looking at. That's what we're looking at. And, and, and it's more of impact-oriented businesses more of community-oriented businesses. It's not just like the money-making machine thing. No, we will make money. Yes, money will come, but are you solving a problem? That's the first thing. That's the first criteria of joining BB Incubator in the very first place. Like, is your business solving a problem, a local problem that can generate income in return? Because if you solve a problem, the community will appreciate by making you wealthy, and that's what we're here for. And you know the, the issue of unemployment, unemployment uh, in Cameroon. Um, I was looking through outsourcing and doing some outsourcing, and I came about an article that was made by Al Jazeera, and that says, uh, study to be jobless. Study to be jobless. So it's um, Cameroon, actually, I, I came to realize, one of the main things that pushed me, I came to realize that Cameroon churns out 500,000 graduates yearly, yeah, sure. and the government, with all its efforts for employment, only have the capacity of recruiting 3,000. That means 470,000 plus are left in the call of unemployment, joblessness, and abject poverty. So, an engineer who studied engineer in the university is now a, a baba, a hair cutter. And the skills that they've learned from the universities 
are left to be obsolete. So they cannot really function on what they have been trained to do. That is why BB Incubator comes in now to say, you know what, it is possible we can, the government is not going to do this all alone. We can do this together. We are an ecosystem builder. We want to support what have been ongoing already by the government, by other stakeholders, by other entrepreneurs also that have been doing a lot to build that ecosystem. So we are here to ensure that we fortify, we build, we help to develop our country. Great. So tell us about some of the projects that um, you've been able to achieve so far. I know it's still new. BB is still very new. Um, but you have projects in hand, the ones you're already working on, and some that you're still planning to work on. Tell us about the projects. Thank you uh, for that. So actually, we've got um, an e-learning platform right now that we are trying to put up to you know, help so support the normal learning um, system. Okay. Um, we hope to have that as one of the top-notch e-learning platforms, not just within Cameroon, but the Central African region and eventually Africa. Uh, there's a lot of work that is ongoing. We do animated videos and stuff, and yes, it's really coming out well, so well. E-learning, is it for entrepreneurs or for the general public? The general public, it actually has to do with the primary and secondary uh, education, the curriculum actually, so all of that. Um, it helps even like for kids that cannot afford to be in a classroom. They can study right on that platform and they're able to write their exams and go through. You know, yeah, it's, that's an amazing stuff that we're, we're coming up with. You know, COVID-19 has taught us a lesson and we've lost a lot because of that. But we're looking at ways by which we can do disruptive stuff, that positive disruptive stuff that can really disrupt the status quo and help the ecosystem and help the community and help even our country too, you know, so yeah. We've also got this uh, project that we're working on is um, the juice production, uh, our juice production startup, uh, doing health uh, oriented drinks. Yeah, so we, we have to now start looking at helping the community too by making them live healthy by eating and drinking healthy. So yeah, it's um, Garden of Eden and we're looking at that. So there are a couple of those too I would make mention of, which is ongoing already. Uh, we're trying to set up those structures in place. Of course, there is the one which I'll mention, uh, which I'll make mention of, I cannot afford not to. She is... Um, uh, a final year university from the you know, for, you, final year student from the University of Bamenda, uh, Roof. She owns. She has this startup, and it is an interior for interior painting stuff and all of that. Actually, when you look at BB Incubator, she is the one that gave that face of it. So I was really inspired to help her through her journey, to like hold her hands and pull her up. So those are some of the projects we're developing, we're helping, we're, we're trying to like put it together. From the contract I gave her, she did so well. Then I decided to like, okay, we get her in. We, you know, we take her as a whole project, as a whole company. We're building it up right now. And she's got like the next door, Neba, which is a financial, which is a bank. Um, they gave her another contract, there's another co company, they gave her another contract. So uh, those are some of the things that we're looking at because we want to do very practical things from a, a very practical approach we're using really. Uh, I think that's what I would mention for now and we've got like some projects that are in the pipeline that I'm trying to collaborate with different um, external, I mean international key partners. We're doing, um, uh, we're trying to build uh, um, smart campuses for universities, like we do smart campuses, and there will be tech spaces, like uh, hands-on tech spaces that will help entrepreneurs as, as well to have, uh, like, uh, we also have a couple of projects that we're looking at, like, you know, that will promote AR, VR stuff. It's, it's purely tech. So, yeah, uh, those are things that I'm looking at currently. And, yeah, some good collaboration will come out from there, hopefully. Nice. Yeah. Now, uh, looking at BB Incubator generally, yeah. what do you think or what 
are the contributions of BB Incubator to the society. What do you think, how do you think BB Incubator can contribute to societal development? I mean, it's already clear, but just spell that out for us. First of all, business requires a lot of knowledge. The, we have had businessmen in Cameroon that started by selling granites, and they go from granites to building amazing industries. We've got those people. And they're still the same, some of their mates that sold the same granites. The only reason that their mates didn't make it that much, the, I will tell you with all confidence that knowledge was part of it. They didn't have access to the knowledge that the person who became a billionaire, who became an industry, an, an, an industry owner, uh, didn't have. So that's the two different things. Knowledge is power, as we say. Yeah. And the application of knowledge is much more powerful. One of the key things that we hope to have is a change of mindset. Because people have, people want to uh, bring about change, but they themselves, their mindset is terrible. It's terrible. The way they think, the way they do their things, is just so discouraging. One of the key things we look at is a change of mindset. To pass that message that traveling abroad is not the solution for you as a Cameroonian. We've got everything right here. The money that a parent will sell a piece of land, 3.5 million, trying to send the son or the daughter to go through Sahara Desert, some of them survive, some of them don't. That hurts us because as Cameroonians, we ought to have that mindset that the 3.5 million can start up a business here. And that child of yours, that daughter of yours, that son of yours can travel as a business person going out there to look for opportunities. And that will help the, the, the ecosystem. That will help the, to enforce the community as well. That will create jobs. That will alleviate poverty. That will eradicate unemployment at some levels. And I think this is how BB Incubator will be able to help as well. So at BB Incubator, we are not just doing that as well. We, we, we're also helping with senior entrepreneurship programs, which is aimed at sensitizing those uh, you know, uh, people in big offices, white collar job people, you know, that you can be working and yet you have, you have that business oriented mindset. So you can be working and you're loyal for, to your company, but you're doing something, you're doing a side investment. You, you have to learn self-investment, of course. You have to learn bootstrapping, savings. That's the senior entrepreneurship program that we look at, really. I, I think that's uh, some of the things that we look at at BB Incubator, which will, in return, you know, um, help the community. Now, what are some of the challenges that you've come across in the process of taking this journey? Because it's never smooth, you know? And how have you been able to overcome these challenges? The first challenge of walking around here is that I'm that type of person, if it is 10 o'clock, it's 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. right? So a Cameroonian, a proper normal timing here, if it's 10 o'clock is sometime maybe 11.30 a.m., and that's a big thing. Yeah. I, I mean, you don't know, you don't know how, what people can lose within just one. So walking around here is the mindset. That's what I'm referring to. There is a certain culture that we have over time entertained, which we have to let go. Those things that we think that don't matter, they do really do matter a lot. Those are the challenges that are faced on, on a daily, like um, getting stuff. It took me like, almost six months to do recruitment of, you know, my uh, personal assistant, um, uh, you know, the secretary, which is the secretary, and also the, an executive marketing manager. It took me about six months. Some other challenges is like a lot of people around here are not, they, they're, you find out to, you, you come to find out, even those that they claim to be expert, they're like opportunist. You get it. People are not sincere to themselves. When you meet people, they're not honest. They're not sincere. They're just looking at you like, oh, you're from abroad? Yeah, you're a tree of money. I want to get my own share. That's it. They're not looking at you like, 
we can support this gentleman, we can support this lady, and we can be able to help her through her journey, and it will appreciate at the end, you know? People don't have that mindset. So people have that mindset of, get it now, get it quick, now. And that's a big problem to development, being honest with you. So these are some of the key problems that we've had. And people would say, yeah, you know, if you give me this contract, I'm going to do my best. They take once you give them money, they disappear. Some of those challenges, I mean, like honesty is one of the things we have to really take serious as Cameroonians. Uh, you know, being on time is something we have to take serious as Cameroonians. Um, doing the right thing, the right way, in the right place is very important. As Cameroonians, if we really have to develop our country and make it to be what we think it should be. Let's assume that you have investment opportunities. What will you be able to achieve if you... Well, do you have some expansion plans? Do you have some projects at hand that you just need investment into them? And if you have these investment opportunities, what do you think you're going to achieve? Um, well, in terms of investment, yes, but I would say no, I'm not an investment platform and we don't do uh, we don't accept investment in, in as much as that is concerned in order not to get it wrong I cannot take money from anybody from from anywhere to put into something and you know eventually of course we will be dealing with financial institutions and other things and collaborations to pull to push through with different projects that will be coming up but as of now our five-year to ten-year plan up to 15 years is to see that we can extend BB Incubator to other regions. And you know, eventually, I hope that uh, Africans will see this like within the Central African region. Maybe some head of states will see this as a necessity to the growth, to the development of their own state and curbing uh, poverty, curbing unemployment, alleviating that poverty, which is like a stigma on you know, us. What do you have to say to people who want to be like you and people who have projects but they are maybe delaying to start with it, people who maybe are already into entrepreneurship but need that push? I would say start with you. Start with you. It's not about gathering money or getting investors. Start with you. And starting with you as an entrepreneur has to be like, don't be that person that is holding a key in your hand and you're looking for it the whole house. The solution is with you. Start with you. Always see it like, it is with me. It depends on me. If I have to make it, it depends on me. Be true to yourself. Stay true to your vision. If it is legit, it will come. It will come to pass. But you have to be patient. You have to be patient. I mean, patience is a virtue. At some point, you just have to be patient. And have that mindset, which I would call, you know, sell granite with the mindset of a millionaire. So, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it from the horse's mouth. If you are selling groundnuts, sell groundnuts with the mindset of a billionaire. That is what our guest of today just told us. Thank you very much again. Thank you. My pleasure. And that is what has brought us to the end of this edition of Managing Africa, dear viewers. Continue watching Dash News 6 p.m. Saturdays for more editions of Managing Africa. Have a lovely day. Stay safe and go nowhere.